everybody, Anita here, and welcome to Topic Tuesday. This week, our topic was actually submitted by a viewer, Jeffrey Lowry. And we have a little commentary going on in the background with Charlie. <laughs> I think he wants to come in, but he's not going to. So this week, she wanted to know what Jim does. She has seen video of his front room with all of his tools and things like that, so she was curious to know, you know, what does he do with all that? So we are going to actually see and hear from Jim as to what he does. Okay, so Jim is already sitting here at his workbench and he is working on a watch. So what is it that you do, Jim? Um, they want to know what you do, what are you, you know, all these tools for and everything, so. Well, right now I'm in the process of trying to restore this uh, 1889 Waltham pocket watch here. Uh, and that's what I'll do is I'll take and I'll get pocket watches or, you know, old watches that don't work anymore or need some repair, fix them up, and then what I'll do is I'll recase them in a new case. And this is a smart watch, so it's, but it's, you know, basically get a case. And we'll take this pocket watch, put it in a watch, a wristwatch case. And then once we're done getting everything working, make sure everything looks right. Like this one has bad balance. This is a good balance here. The problem is that it's a little bit, I don't know if you can see that or not, it's a little bit small for this balance wheel. So it just sort of drops in there. Should press fit in there and sit nice and tight. But so I'm gonna have to either do some shellac and get it to sit in there properly. Um, but the problem with shellac is that as this balance wheel moves around inside the watch, there's a lot of force being put on it. So I'm not sure if shellac is gonna work or not. And then it's gonna be a little bit possibly a little bit heavier on one side or the other, so it might throw off the actual balance. So what you do need to do is you need to poise it. Uh, but I don't have a poisoning table, so I can't really do that. So it's just kind of a lot of guesswork. So, But once we're done and we actually get a case, you know, the end result is something like this here. So what you would have is you'd have an old pocket watch like this one here. This is an old Hamilton pocket watch. It's been recased in a new case here. And then, uh, you know, can be worn on the wrist rather than in the pocket. Um, same with most of these. Um, here you can see there's some pocket watches that haven't been cased yet. This is an old wall from 1888. This watch is over 100 years old. It's in really good condition. We got this one and restored it. Um, I think it needed a spring, a main spring, and basically a good cleaning so I think this is an 18, 1889 I think it's uh, seven jewels so. so when you're working on all these watches it's a lot of really tedious work isn't it I mean you know these little areas that you have to work in are really really small and tight and yeah. So it's a, it's a lot of work that goes into redoing one of these. Depending, yeah, depending on what's wrong with it and what parts it needs, the availability of the parts. Um, obviously, you know, if I had a you know a lot of different tools, I could make different parts for these watches. But you know, it takes certain tools to be able to do that. So what I try to do is I try to get stuff that is all there, things that have parts available, um, you know, things that where I can, pieces that I can actually buy parts for still today. There's a lot of watches that you can send to big companies that they actually have a lot of the milling tools and a lot of the lathes and, you know, things like that. They can actually fabricate their own parts. So, um, but obviously those companies, you know, they're pretty big companies and they have, you know, a large budget where they can get those types of tools and actually do that type of work. So. I don't, fortunately, unfortunately, I don't have that type of budget, so I just try to get things that that are repairable, that are fixable, and that actually have parts that are available for them. 
So, here's a box your mom gave me. Pulsar, I'm trying to get fixed on that. And this is a quartz watch, so I'm not... Quartz watches are a little more... They're not really my specialty, but... You know, when you're doing this type of thing, it's good to be well-rounded and be able to use... You know, be able to fix all kinds of different types of watches. So, um, quartz watches, mechanical watches, automatic movements, things like that. So, it's more of a hobby, really, you know. Um, I've had some success on eBay selling a few, selling, you know, a couple watches... Um, I had one really good sale, and I had another sale where, you know, um, didn't go so well. I'll let me to tell you about that. Cause, you know, well, that was just a nightmare. Still, the guy basically ripped little, him off. It's still a little raw, so that was, yeah, he that got was ripped one of my off. favorite watches. It was, uh, <laughs> I think it was a 1947 Bulova. Oh, wait, no, it was, uh, actually, it was a 1944 Bulova 17 Jewel pocket watch that I had cased in a wrist movement. It's a beautiful watch from the World War II era. Um, it had a great dial. It was, it was a great watch. It was really nice. And I was really proud of that watch. But, yeah, sometimes things happen, so, you know. But these watches you have here, are they all for sale? Um, yeah, everything's for sale. So, <laughs> so you hear that, sale. folks? Everything's for sale. Everything and for with sale. Christmas coming up... But. If you know somebody who might want a really nice watch, you can let me know. You know, other, you know, I remember one of your friends sent some old watches that uh, they weren't using anymore, and that was really nice too because it gave me the opportunity to practice and learn a little bit, um, some scrap movements. So, you know, it was a good opportunity for me to learn. So, any time that I can, you know, pick up something that is broken or somebody doesn't want anymore. It's really a good opportunity for me to learn. And um, same goes for everybody else, too. I mean, if you're into hobbies, or if you're into certain things that you like to do, um, just like here, I have, you know, this camera, you know, I, this camera that doesn't work anymore. I've been trying to fix it, and it's pretty much finished. So I'm going to actually sell this for parts on eBay. I may take it into Suratani, the big city, to see if they can repair it. But if the repair cost is more than the cost of a new used camera then obviously this will get sold off for parts so we try to fix everything here especially in Thailand um, where you can't just you know, replace things readily you know there's a lot of places here in Thailand that repair things because people in Thailand don't throw anything away they always save it they save everything because it can be repaired so they yeah. can save a little money and try to repair it or save themselves you know um, the hassle of having to to go on a long journey to replace um, something like a television or, or a refrigerator or things like that, especially if they live in rural areas, they save everything and there's usually a repair shop, several repair shops in every town. So um, it's one of the kind of rules of thumb here, don't throw anything away. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then you got all these tools and stuff which, you know, you can use. Yeah, these are general purpose tools that I use for fixing things around the house, or, you know, fixing some of the things that they're broken or whatnot, so you know, um, that's just uh, general purpose stuff that just about everyone would have in their in their garage or in their workshop, you know, to fix things. So a few special tools, some small tools that I use for, you know, um, checking out electronics and things like that that are broken or I need to figure out what's going on. So is this your next project that you're working on? Um, yeah. <laughs> Are you broken? And actually, here's my next project <laughs> I'm working on here is trying to fix this ribbon cable. So I'm going to have to do is solder this ribbon cable together. And this is just a practice um, piece here for my MacBook that got broken. And I have, I think, this is a spare. So it had gotten broken. So what I'm doing is I'm clearing away the little, the, the, the strips here on the ribbon. I'm trying to bear the copper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder those together. I need a couple other things before I actually do that, but it's very small soldering. I'll have to use a loop, you know, like, uh, you know, I'll use a loop like this when I'm actually soldering it so I can see it. I don't know if you can actually see it. You actually, I don't know if you can see that or not, but very small. I have to bear the ends on that. And then there's two sides, so there's another side here that's got full copper 
acts as and then there's an insulator. So this is a double sided ribbon cable. So there's actually if you look at this how thin it is, there's actually two sides. There's um, a path going on one side and there's a path going on the other side and in between there's an insulating layer. So this is basically one, two, three layers here of this cable and it's extremely small. So I could um, never do any of this stuff. I can't half see uh, and there's no way I could <laughs> I can hardly do it either, so, you know, but it's just, like I say, it's a hobby, and it helps us to, um, you know, save some money when it comes to, you know, our, our things that we've purchased and bought, um, so, yeah, you know. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to tell us what you do with all this stuff, and letting everybody else know, because I know that a lot of people that follow the cat page are always, you know, wondering about you and stuff since you don't really, you know, get on the page or anything, so. <laughs> well, you know me. I tend to sort of, you know, keep to myself. Yeah, you're that. pretty low-key, so. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, and thank you, Thunder, for joining us on this. And all that noise that was in the background while he was talking, which hopefully didn't drown him out, was Charlie digging around in the litter boxes, so he I apologize. He go in there and actually dig himself out of spot and actually you know, try to take a little nap in there. So. Yeah, which is just lovely. And, of course, I just cleaned them out and had everything nice and neat over there, and I'm sure it's a disaster. But, anyway, thank you so much, Jim, for joining us on our Topic Tuesday. <laughs> You're welcome. My pleasure. Well, there you have it, folks. Um... That was Jim and what he does with all his tools. We still got Charlie over here making a big old ruckus as usual. Oh, get your mouth off of there. I see teeth. He's trying to chew his way through. Oh, Lord. Oh, well. And anyway, and also, I, I was going to mention, because everybody was asking about my haircut. Well, this is it, y'all. It's a little bit of a mess. It's raining again today, so... I was out in the rain a little bit earlier, and so I can't promise it looks all that great, but this is it. So it's, you know, I got quite a bit cut off. I mean, it was down to here, and so you can see I got a lot of it cut off, but it needed it bad. But anyway, as usual, please give this video a thumbs up. Leave comments in the comment section, including more topics. And thank you, Deborah Lowry. I appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do. Also, if you'd like to help support the channel, here's how you can do that. Have a good one and we will see y'all later. Bye.